How's it going, everybody? So we're back talking some more Season 2 of Invincible on the channel, Episode 7. Can you believe that we're already at the penultimate episode of Season 2? It's one of the big things I hate about them breaking up these seasons into two parts, that we're finally building up that momentum again for Season 2, but it ends next week. Though next week is the final episode of Season 2, I have to say they do a pretty great job ramping up the intensity leading into the finale with this episode alone, because so much stuff that goes down in this episode, particularly at the end, is insane. But before diving into my thoughts about the episode, make sure you share your thoughts down below. How'd you feel about episode seven? And if you're a big fan of Invincible, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe because we're talking about Invincible every single week. Fortunately, before everything starts getting pretty hectic later down the road in episode seven, we do start off a little bit more lighthearted having Mark and Amber go to Comic-Con. As someone that goes to a lot of conventions, it's always cool to see them portrayed in media. Probably the best part of this entire experience of them going to Comic-Con is the little meta wink that they make towards themselves and us as an audience. When Mark goes and meets the creator of Seance Dog and asks him about the next season of the series, then he brings up the fact that animation takes a long time, highlighting cutting corners in the animation. Was the sequence pretty funny? Yeah, I definitely had a good laugh at it, but I am not going to be laughing if I have to wait an extended period of time for season three, similar to how long we waited for season two between part one and now part two. Like to be expected, any single time that Amber and Mark ever hang out together and are having a great time, there's always something that comes along to ruin the experience, whether it's Mark has to save somebody, Cecil asks him to go on a mission. This time around, it involves having to go and find Rex, since he left the hospital on his own to go on a mission all by himself. Being someone that is now a major fan of Rex after that exchange between him and the Lizard League, I was feeling about as nervous as Rex was, trying to psych himself up. Did you completely get why Rex wants to do this? Overcoming that trauma, which is something that we see as they talk more and more, is very similar trauma that Mark experienced recently with his father. Rarely, if ever, has there been a character like Rex that has come along where I wasn't that fond of the character all that much, and then in a two-episode span, they're one of my favorite characters in the entire show. The sheer development he's had in these last two episodes has been amazing. It gave me a lot more respect for him as a character, and it made it all the more epic when he does manage to duke it out with these villains and pulls it off, and he uses this amazing, crazy cannon move finisher on them. As Rex continues to rise in the ranks of being one of my favorite characters, it is unfortunate that the Guardians of Globe, by and large, is in such disarray after Kate's death. It isn't surprising at all that there's still so much infighting between the members. Many of them want to quit. Even Immortal wants to take a leave of absence. In essence, basically everything is a shit show, and that's not even including the fact that Donald figures out his true past which is far more insane than I ever expected. And that's saying something, because it was already kind of surreal that he was basically a robot. Because once Cecil gives Donald the access to all of his memories, turns out he's died a shit ton of times, and just chooses to have all of his memories erased each and every time since he feels it'd slow him down. It was already messed up when he was basically just a robot once, but the fact that he's died this many times and he erases his memory because it would mess him up because of the trauma, that is so dark. Layers within these characters' backstories is one of the things that I like so much about Invincible. Obviously, I'm going to love the superhero drama of it all, but the human drama in Invincible, I think, is as compelling, if not more in some cases. Like, for example, when Donald steps in to stop William from killing himself due to all of his past trauma he's experienced. That, while continuing to hammer home that Mark is continuing to struggle making this relationship with Amber work, fighting in his mother for advice on how she dealt with being in such a similar situation about the reality of dating a superhero. The idea of how lonely it can be when you're the significant other that doesn't have powers. The superpower aspect in relationship is certainly not something that we can relate to, but it's fascinating getting that perspective of being the other person in a superhero relationship that doesn't have powers, give and take of it all. We continue to see time and time again, Mark tries so hard to make this relationship with Amber work, getting the Guardians to step in for him so they can go on these elaborate dates, and there's always some sort of crisis that gets in the way which continues to happen as they finally go on another date and they get interrupted by a Viltrumite woman. Not to jump ahead too much about Anissa, but that woman is horrified. Just in this short glimpse of her in episode seven, I am frightened of the next time she's gonna show up in this show at some point. One cool thing about Anissa is she's voiced by Chantel Van Santen, who you might know from being Billy Butcher's wife in The Boys. Or maybe if you're a Flash fan, you remember her being Patty Spivitt on The Flash for a little while. Back when The Flash was a good TV show, I mean, I still watched all the seasons of The Flash, but I miss when The Flash was really good back in the day. She makes quite a first impression, threatening to kill Amber in the middle of this restaurant if Mark doesn't come with her, 
clearly, like most filter mics, she's not a big fan of Earth Customs, but she isn't here to fight, at least initially. The fact that she's not here to fight leads to a kind of interesting limbo of awkwardness and intensity because she has no problem tagging along with Mark when he has to go and fight off a giant kaiju that attacks a cruise ship. The entire time Mark's fighting for his life to take out this kaiju, she's just floating in the air menacingly. Only for her to just inevitably fly right through the monster and kill it instantly. With that kind of display of power, I was kind of nervous that Mark might not be in the best position to try and fight Anissa. I mean, sure, Mark has been getting stronger and stronger as the episodes go on. But it's on. made even more clear by this exchange, he still has a long way to go. I love Mark, I give him an A for effort at trying to fight back against Anissa, but this fight between him and Anissa is just a straight ass whooping. And it just gets worse and worse the longer that it goes on and he tries to fight back. I mean, it's an amazing fight, but- Mark stands no chance and that's where the fear kicks in when you realize that uh, there's pretty much nobody that can stop this fight. This fight only ends because Anissa decides to let it end, not because anyone could step in and actually stop her. Thankfully for Mark's sake, Anissa doesn't kill him, only leaving behind a warning to Mark that he needs to come to his senses before someone else comes and actually does kill him. I believe Anissa does give a name for who's going to come and do it, but I don't want to look it up because I haven't read the comic books, I don't want to have anything spoiled, but if you're a fan of Invincible, you probably know exactly who that person's going to be. Essentially, in a nutshell, the best way I could describe how I feel about Anissa after this first appearance of her character, Mark me down as scared and horny. <laughs> as if it wasn't already looking pretty bleak at the future of the relationship, especially now with this Anissa interruption, was finally the last straw between Mark and Amber. It's such a somber, heartbreaking sequence, seemingly finally ending things between the two of them. They really pack on all the intense emotions towards the tail end, leading into that finale, not only because it seems like Mark and Amber finally are through. Get some stuff with Alan going out and getting captured on purpose to try and break out Nolan, I'm assuming. The real big thing that's leading into the finale that has me excited for next week, Mark gets a phone call from his mom, but it's actually Angstrom who's holding his entire family hostage. So that's gonna be wild, finally seeing a showdown between Angstrom and Invincible. I have to imagine it's gonna be a pretty spectacular finale next week. But yeah, episode seven, I thought was another great episode of part two of season two. But now for my thoughts on the episode, make sure you share your thoughts down below. How'd you feel about episode seven? Did you like the episode? Did you not like the episode? How'd you feel about Anissa and her appearance in this episode? As always, thank you guys so much for checking out videos. I always do appreciate it. Make sure you like on the video and also subscribe to the channel to update reviews, reactions, unboxings, and more. For the next time, I'll see you guys later.